Well, thanks, Veena. Um, yeah, today we are, we are going to be talking about the evolution of tree diversity uh, in the Western Ghat, Sri Lanka uh, biodiversity hotspot. Uh, all the uh, several speakers talked about the Western Ghats, so which is essentially going from the western side of the uh, India and all the way down to Sri Lanka, so this, this part of the, the biogeographic region. And then, uh, of course, it's very high in biodiversity. This is Western Ghats component, this is the Sri Lanka component. Even though numbers are slightly less on the Sri Lankan side, if you go by the geographical location of the area, I think we have much higher diverse density uh, compared to the Western Guards overall. Uh, actually, I'm going to be focusing on three questions. The first is actually, where did they come from? So that question is being uh, technically addressed through phylogenetic biogeography. And then how do they diversify? So mostly uh, based on the reproductive biology. And then how do species assemble into communities? It's called community phylogenetics. Yeah, we talked about a few times before as well. So the, the Indian plate, or the Indian, uh, Deccan plate, actually is the one of the plates that moved the most. As you can see from the Gondwana, from here, it's moved all the way up, and then uh, joined the Eurasian plate, and then um, the, the biota, the biota actually, which was from this area, uh, can be moved all the way here on board. And then, of course, some of the, the biota, maybe uh, the, the trees in this particular case, uh, after they uh, merged with the, uh, the Eurasian plate, they can be uh, uh, exchanged back and forth as well. So this is actually Sandeep Sen's uh, PhD work uh, from a tree. So he showed using uh, uh, Piper, of course, it's not a tree species, but using Piper as a, an example, using phylogenetic trees, and showed that they are originated from um, the Eurasian plate, or the Empire East, and then moved to Indian plate and then diversified in, in, uh, in the Western Ghats area. This is another PhD thesis from a tree, uh, Sendil Kumar. He used um, the rattan, again, not a tree species, but uh, using rattan, he showed actually they originated from the uh, Eurasian and then they moved to Eastern Himalayas and some to the Andaman Nicobar Islands and then moved to Western uh, uh, Ghats and then diversified there. So I'm going to give one example from, actually that is uh, Sendil. Uh, one example from the tropical family Diplodocarpaceae. Actually, Vandana Prasad also talked about very briefly about it. So this is a, a tree, a family, which is pantropical. That means distributed throughout the, uh, all, all, all the, um, the tropic regions and dominant lowland uh, tropical rainforest in Asia, and three subfamilies, 18 genera and 500 species. And of course, the name Diptero means two-winged fruits, so that's the type genus is two-winged, but of course, it can range from no wings to all the way to five wings. Those are actually modified calyxes, so that is important for the, the seed dispersal. So this is the distribution patterns. We have one or two species in South America, and then about 30 or so in Africa, about 500 or so in Asia. Um, so um, this is the phylogenetic tree. Uh, you don't have to worry about the, the names. Um, just the colors should be enough at this point. So we have various uh, genera. Maybe battery. So this is a phylogenetic tree, and then actually this phylogenetic tree has been uh, dated using this fossil record. These are the fossil record points, and to get this tree. So the summary of that is uh, the, the Pacramoidea, which is a South American um, uh, group, and then the Africans, and then the Asian plants, or the Asian trees. Uh, so they are, the, the, the bottom line in this one is you can just focus on the, the, um, the divergence time. So this is the time scale starting from about 120 million years to present day. And then okay, so um, yeah, about this is the time scale. And then if you look at this subfamily Diptero that is this group, 
that evolved actually when the, the plate was drifting. And then major lineages, most of these lineages, they also diversified while that was on the plate with drifting. And then the important part is this terminal part. If you look at this, all this diversification, all the diversity, they are, they are much, much more recent. So that is where the, the important, how these species become diversified or the, how these taxa became diversified. So that, and also there's one clade. Um, so section Duna, this is one of the uh, uh, group of uh, diptercups in Sri Lanka. I will get back to this later on uh, in uh, another topic later on. So, so how do they... Do, uh, so the... Um, so the, from the ancestor there would have been, at some point, they may have speciated and then forming into species A and B. So this, this point, this point is where the, the reproductive biology that we are going to be uh, looking into how they uh, contribute to the speciation. Uh, so the tropical rainforest trees, they're considered to be low density, especially isolated individuals, as um, uh, Dr. Raven this morning uh, mentioned in his uh, speech as well. And in 1966, Federal uh, thought these were actually isolated trees. They were non-synchronous flowering. This, therefore, selfing and inbreeding may be much more prevalent. So genetically speaking, then those individuals may be isolated. That can lead to different species through just random genetic drift. And Ashton 1969 uh, showed that the trees are, even though they're isolated, they, are, uh, they must be flowering synchronously and outcrossing may be much more prominent. So therefore, the genetic divergence is going to be natural selection. That means there's a, a predominant gene flow and the species may be getting selected rather than being genetic drift is going to be leading to speciation. So to test these two alternative scenarios, reproductive biology is the one key because in, if you look at this one, essentially we are talking about selfing and inbreeding, outcrossing. So to do that, we need flowering phenology we need mating system, we need gene flow, uh, pollination, and seed dispersal. Actually, this is where the, the major contribution actually came from Dr. Bauer. So we might think Dr. Bauer as a conservation biologist. I would argue he has been, uh, always been an evolutionary biologist. So um, for 50 years of pioneering work by Dr. Bauer, uh, crucial for uh, understanding actually this, this component. I will give you a few examples. So this was 1969. So he went to Washington DC, gave a talk, and convinced that we need information about the breeding systems. So it's not a surprise, Dr. Baba always uh, visits uh, capitals or the uh, countries. Nowadays, I think he's visiting um, mostly New Delhi, and then he was able to raise money to do the projects. So I, as you can see, first from o Organization for Tropical Studies, um, and then National Science Foundation, then Harvard University Charles Bullard Fellowship, and then again NSF funding. So using this, he came up with several papers. The very first one is of course that was from India, looking at the chromosomal evolution in tropical hardwoods. So he's the first one to show that tropical trees tend to have large number of chromosomes. Uh, the, that means it could be most likely uh, hybridization and polyploidization may be the reason for the diversification. And then from Costa Rica, in lowland forest trees, he showed about 54% trees uh, are uh, self-incompatible and also 22% dioecious. And another study, uh, this is looking at the foraging behavior of solitary bees with Gordon Frankie, Opla, and Bauer. So lowland forests in Costa Rica, um, so they are uh, self-incompatible. I can see the numbers from here. And also intertree movement of bees sufficient for the fruit set. And then another study, so these are all random collections. He had a lot more papers. So in this one, he showed that lowland forest in Costa Rica, 85% of the 28 species he studied, they were self-incompatible. And this, again, he showed more self-incompatibility in, in other plants. And then another study, breeding systems of trees in tropical, low, uh, low, uh, tropical wet forest. Again, lowland wet forest in Costa Rica, about 88% of the 25 species studied, they were self-incompatible. Incompa and then the mimicry 
uh, of male by female flowers. In this particular case, it showed that lowland for again in Costa Rica, the female flowers do not produce nectar, but mimic male flowers, so that way they can actually again um, increase or the, uh, the cross-pollination. And this one is actually even more interesting study. If you look at this one, so anthers in the female flowers do not tehis. That means they make flowers, both male and flowers, look similar, but in the anthers in the female flowers do not dehis. That means when the bees come, they so they, they are not going to be selfing because the, uh, the anthers are not released, uh, the, uh, the pollen is not released. At the same time, their flowering phenology on the same tree is one day it could be male flowers and the second day it could be female flowers. So that way there's no selfing but promoting um, outcrossing. So essentially, in tropical trees, they are predominantly outcrossing, mostly self-incompatible, and the flower mimicry to promote outcrossing, and some are functionally dioecious. This particular case, they are functionally dioecious because even though they have both flowers on the same tree, their phenology is different because one day it's male, the other day is female. And then second set of experiments, uh, again it showed dioecy in many, many cases and some of them actually in collaboration with Uma Shankar and Ganesha as well. So the, some tropical trees are dioecious, that means there's no selfing at all because they have to be outcrossing because these male and female trees are different. And then the third set of studies, basing, based on genetic data, using isozymes, again low population differentiation and high outcrossing, and then later on using microsatellite data, long distance gene flow and population differentiation. All these things actually pointing towards the outcrossing is predominant and also the, 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 the speciation could be, uh, should be mostly selection based. And, and this particular study actually is saying to look into the speciation, so we need to look into genera with large number of sympatric species and look into plant pollinate interactions, levels of gene flow and genetic differentiation. Those are the crucial elements to study using uh, any sympatric species groups. So this is where that group that I mentioned, section DUNA, uh, is going to be coming into be important. So this is actually 1985, Dr. Bava, Dr. Peter Ashton, Dr. Savitri Gunatilaka and Dr. Nimal Gunatilaka. They had a USAID research grant on reproductive ecology of rainforest trees in Sri Lanka. So this was to study in that particular group that I mentioned, section Duna, one of the sympatric group, uh, uh, species groups. And that time I was undergraduate student, just finished, so I joined uh, this project as a master student. So that was, that was my entry into this domain of the reproductive biology and uh, the evolutionary biology of tropical uh, trees. So section Duna is about nine sympatric Shoria species endemic to Sri Lanka, and we did the uh, reproductive biology studies. And this is an example of, uh, I think battery is weak. No, I think it's. On the presentation. Oh, I see. So flowering phenology of uh, Shoria species. So if, when we are looking at, no. So within species, actually if you look at these are one species, another species, another species, within species they are highly synchronized flowering. Uh, that means they can promote uh, cross-pollination. And then th these are between species. If you take one species, another species, another species, another species, they are going to be staggered. That means they can um, minimize the competition for the pollinators. That means the pollination within those groups. And this is the on the canopy, the reproductive biology. Uh, so the flowers are pollinated by bees. and flowers last only one day. And they are pollinated by bees again, I just want. Uh, and then cross-pollination experiments. So the mating system was predominantly outcrossing, self-compatible, and also higher fruit set with outcrossing. 
then we looked into the, those species. Anyway, the summary is, um, summary from that study is highly synchronized flowering of conspecific pro uh, species uh, promote outcrossing. And the staggered, flo staggered flowering between species minimizes competition for the pollinators. The predominantly outcrossing mating system promotes outcrossing and the effects of random genetic drift is minimal. And the natural selection may play a bigger role in the uh, speciation in this case. And this was actually um, presented at the uh, conference again organized by Dr. Bawa. So in, in Malaysia, and then uh, this is uh, Mrs. Savitri Gunatilaka, Nimal Gunatilaka, myself, and also um, Ganeshaya and Uma Shankar also there. Uh, so again, uh, that was published in, the, in the, the, uh, the edited volume, again, edited by Dr. Bawa. So there are lots of contribution from Dr. Bawa on this reproductive biology and also speciation in tropical trees. As I mentioned, more of evolutionary biologists than conservation biologists. So the next question, Next question is, how do species assemble into communities? Uh, the technique is community uh, phylogenetics. So if you take one region and then another region and then another region, if the species are very closely related, and if they're competing, one is going to, one is going to outcompete the other one. And if they are selection-based, that means the habitat is favoring certain uh, species, then the closely related species are going to have traits that are going to be adaptive for that particular condition. So the resulting phylogeny in relation to the geographical location, it should be uh, more like this pattern because if it's uh, uh, clustering, that means selection is playing a role. And if the competition is playing a role, uh, the species which are related ones are going to be dispersed different places, but here clustered ones, that means related uh, individuals are going to be clustered into one habitat. Using this principle, uh, so Shri Prakash, again uh, associated with Eritrea as well, he did a uh, study, uh, the, uh, actually the plot data generated by uh, Ramesh, B.R. Ramesh from Pondicherry. And analyzing this data, he showed that here again, environmental filtering is the one key factor which is going to be playing a role in speciation or the actually community assembly in this case. Now Sachin, uh, Sachin Harish is now continuing that work. Sachin Harish is continuing that work and then also associated with A3 uh, as well as Concordia. And actually, I know uh, both uh, Munoz and Ramesh, they're also doing similar studies uh, in this uh, community assembly aspects. And then we did uh, some more analysis. This is from Mohammed Latif Khan's work from Northeast India for the Eastern Himalayas. Stephanie Shun analyzed the data and also with Purabi. Uh, again, we are finding phylogenetic diversity patterns uh, supporting environmental filtering. Now Khan has a project in central India, so they are enumerating sp species that we are going to be analyzing the data similar way. So this, in summary, the studies on phylogenetic biogeography, reproductive biology, and community phylogenetics of trees in the Western Ghats Sri Lanka biodiversity hotspot, as well as India general, are limited. Uh, we, I saw some studies, but not many uh, studies available. And then I think we, and also the good, good news is there are several young researchers actually actively engaged in these areas. So we need a research network to coordinate and support the work of emerging next generation of uh, researchers. Uh, so I think we should uh, start forming that. And if you're interested in participating in forming this network, please contact Sandeep Sen, one of the recent PhDs from A3. So he generously agreed to coordinate the group. And then let's showcase our progress, our progress at the symposium. Uh, <laughs> progress at symposium celebrating Dr. Bawa's 85th birthday in 2025. So that means we should be getting ready, preparing data, and be ready to uh, have our next symposium in five years. I hope Madam Rohini Nilakani making notes to make reserve money for our next symposium in 2025. Uh, with that note, I would like to thank all the funding agencies and supporters. Uh, I'm sorry about all the slide, uh, I think uh, the, the forwarding, we had some issues. Uh, any questions? <laughs>